Hi, I'm Precious, and I'm a freshman at the University of Central Florida. This is my literary narrative. From my humble beginnings, I was taught to read and write by my mom and dad. I actually had to know how to read and write before I entered kindergarten. So I went to this school called Oak Hill Christian Academy. I hated it. But that's besides the point. This is where I was introduced to reading and writing. Through repetition, writing my name over and over again. Writing my name over and over again. Didn't understand exactly why I had to write my name over and over again. I'd be like this. I'd be really mad. I remember being very angry. And I think that was a problem that arised. You should want to make your child understand why because as a child, you ask why a lot. It's important that a child ask why, and it's important for the child to get the answer, either through their own thinking or a prompting from other people. One math test. And this is what's so ironic. It was not a reading, a reading nor writing. It was a math test. And I was unable to complete, to even start this math test. My heart dropped. My heart literally dropped. I couldn't remember how to spell my name. I wrote P-R-E. I just sat there staring at the paper, whacking my head, trying to remember how to spell my name. And I just couldn't. I felt so stupid. I was panicking. I didn't know what to do. Like, I couldn't remember how to spell my own name. When I go back and think, I'm like, maybe that repetitious way of teaching someone how to write wasn't the best way. And that brings upon the idea of literary sponsors. In Brandt's um, essay, she analyzed and went in depth and how materials affect your learning acquisition. I liked Brandt's comparison of literary sponsors as something like a TV commercial. Commercials sponsor certain things so that they can get paid. They're not doing it altruistically. My mom, she was trying to get me into that school. It was the fact of getting me into that school why she was sponsoring me. So there was another goal that led to my task of writing. And that is definitely a memory that ties back to the whole literary sponsorship. After a careful analysis of my memories, what exactly changed my perspective of literacy as a whole is this one story I'm about to tell, which I don't really like telling people because it makes me feel stupid because I kind of feel stupid telling it. I can't even remember who I've told this story, but I'm going to tell it. I don't tell many people this, but you know, a Precious exclusive into my life. No one else has heard this story. Debut story from Precious, the institution that was a part of my learning how to read and write. Like most people was in elementary school. An elementary school was their institution. It was mine. I was in the fourth grade. I don't know why, but in this elementary school, the fourth grade had its status. You were upstairs. You were on the second floor, which means, of course, you were above them all in intelligence and also in status. You were cooler than everyone else. Lots of cool things you could do once you're in the fourth grade. In the fourth grade, you actually switch classes. You had two classes to go to. You switch classes, the English and the math. You didn't do that in the lower grades. In my elementary school, you could run for office, like class president, class treasurer, you could run for office in the fourth grade. Anyways, the fourth grade had a status. Grade went up to the fifth, but the fifth graders were kind of old and a bit scary. They were kind of like the big kids. Ugh, we were the cool ones, fourth grade. Enough with the generalities. Back to the memory of my fourth grade. We had this project in writing class. We had to write a hundred word essay about what America meant to us. That was like, essay. <laughs> That sounds cool. Essay. S-A-S-A. -S -A. To tell you the truth, I didn't actually know what the word essay meant. I kind of kept it quiet, like I could play it off, you know, kind of use the words she was saying to kind of create my own definition of what essay actually meant. And you know, of course, I didn't ask a question. You know, nobody does that. Who wants to ask a question and be the dumb person in the class? Not me. Who? I didn't ask any questions. I just created the definition by using parts to make a whole. There is an English word for it, if only I can think of it. Many parts to make a whole. What is it? I think it's synecdoche. I utilized synecdoche before I even knew it was a word. Anyways, I didn't know what it meant and I didn't ask any questions, which was mistake number one. But enough about my mistakes, back to my memory. Uh, we had to write an 100 word essay. So I was like, hmm, where did I hear that word before? Essay, essay, essay. 
A S A S A. And I'm like, oh, I remember. It was on SpongeBob. I say, prepare to be written. I'm doing it. I'm doing yeah. it. Yeah. See how it looks so far. The SpongeBob had to write a hundred word essay, or maybe it was eight hundred words. Actually, he had to write an eight hundred words essay. I remember how much SpongeBob hated it. He absolutely hated it. I thought, you know, as a proactive student, I'm gonna get started right away. I began the task of numbering my paper from one to one hundred. I even left spaces in between each number for neatness. You see presentation was everything. And then I began thinking of a hundred words, not just any hundred words, a hundred words about what America meant to me. And it was there when things got hard. I stared at the paper. Man, no wonder SpongeBob was so stressed. What America means to me? Um, liberty, freedom, country, hope. By the time class was over, I'd only written 20 words. My friends came over and asked me, what are you doing? And I said, writing an essay. And I even showed them that I'd already numbered my page from one to 100. They gave me a look like, oh, well, come on. It was due the next day and I was so panicked. This was the hardest thing ever. SpongeBob, I feel your pain. A hundred words, a hundred words, and not just any words, words to describe America. I was very motivated because the person who had the best hundred word essay got to say it during the assembly. So I stayed up late thinking of word upon word. If I could come up with a reason why it related to America, then I wrote it down. The next day I was talking to my friends about how hard it was. It took me like literally a long time and uh, no one really related to what I was saying like they were like it was easy hundred words no big deal and I'm like what hundred words about America I passed mine in and it wasn't until the next day that the teacher kind of laughed it off I don't remember this as like some type of ha 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 silly girl you just made a silly mistake ha ha this is kind of humorous it was more like why are you so dumb how could you think that weren't you paying attention that's not what that means dumb 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 you're dumb for thinking that that's what it that's what I remember it being like really harsh I felt completely crappy for lack of better word at the moment felt like a piece of crap yeah I was crushed I really really wanted to be the one to get up on that stage and read my hundred words about America. And it took me a long time, seriously. And then as everyone was reading their words off the page, I'm like, duh, like why, like duh. Like a hundred word essay doesn't mean like specifically a hundred words about America. Writing a paragraph, everyone was reading these paragraphs. I'm like, if she would have just told us we had to write a paragraph, it would have been so much easier. Why did she have to use the word essay? How does this relate to illiteracy? For one, SpongeBob is not a very good literacy sponsor. He's actually a negative literary sponsor. And children, you can't leave off technology and types of media as material. Children soak up things like a sponge. And when they see <laughs> SpongeBob, Sponge, uh, the story, soak up things like a sponge. People soak up things like SpongeBob. What they see on TV, they would probably use it to try to understand the word world around them. Even if it's false, that's just how their brain is trying to work. You know, it tries to figure out answers on their own. And that's sadly what I had to do. That's how it turned out when you have a literary sponsor such as SpongeBob. SpongeBob isn't so much a sponsor as a material because it's the media. The media you see on TV was the material I had to use to try to come up with the definition of a word I didn't know. That's my story. Writing, I started off hating it because I couldn't, a uh, traumatic experience when I was little. Loved it after com putting a competitive nature changed my perspective of writing. And thirdly, word acquisition. Your materials and literary sponsors that help you with your learning of new words. SpongeBob, mm -mm -mm. word acquisition, using things that you know to figure out things you don't know and my materials were that of the media from the tv show spongebob so there we go again i'm precious a freshman at university of central florida and that was my literary narrative